Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, I don't have any complaints. We're having we're having some Buckeye fun. Some this is a good 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 time. I think maybe to be a Buckeye. Hold on, it's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. There we go. You know, I kind of heard that one a little bit. You know, with with the noise gates that we have on and off to help prevent any kind of um, additional noise we don't want in the background. I typically do not hear that, but I kind of heard the beginning stage of that one there. Interesting. It always comes through on the recording. I wonder if I'm sending you different audio than I'm sending. I don't know. We're not going to have that conversation while the podcast is going. Uh, Audio routing on a computer is uh, not fun. So let's not poke at it while we're recording. This this would be a good idea. Um, Kyle, we're doing uh, these are some of my favorite episodes to do. Um, I I like these because we can just kind of goof around and have a little bit of fun. We ask the people in our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com, to send us a bunch of questions, and then we simply answer those questions. We don't really prep for these at all, so sometimes these sometimes these hooligans will send us some questions that are, like, research intensive, and then we just kind of go, I don't know. Because, um, again, this is, uh, this is our opportunity to be a little loose, have a little fun, and and just answer some questions as they as they come. Um do you want to just start with the questions? Any? Um, yeah, but before we get into questions here, I just wanted just some quick Buckeye news here for those that I guess I guess I would just say live under a rock here. Um, Ohio State has had two commits recently since the last we talked here. Um, we've had uh, Bodpen Miller out of Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, yes, athlete, we did look probably up be a wide receiver. It. Oh, I, I would say and, uh, certainly I, Ohio State's treating him as a wide receiver. Yeah. And then uh, Jake Cook out of Westerville North, um, interior lineman, um, just committed uh, this Sunday, um, right before we recorded. Yeah. Um, added Isaiah West just a, just a week ago, um, getting in a good recruiting swing all of a sudden. Um We'll, so, I mean, there are a bunch of people in this weekend. Um, we'll see what happens with uh, with Jordan Davison. There's a guy I've had um, in the mock in the past. I'm hearing mixed things there. You know, maybe he doesn't want to be a part of a three person, a three running back class. Maybe Ohio State's having. I, I don't know. I'm hearing mixed stuff there. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um we hear good things about David Sanders. Um, he that would yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a, at the top of my wish list would be David Sanders. Yeah, heard, heard it was a lot of um, a good weekend for a lot of the official visit visitors that came into Ohio State over the weekend here or the past couple of weekends here. So, yeah, well, we'll just it's kind of a wait and see, see what what happens here. But but yeah, it seems like Ohio State's ready to try all they can to get Sanders to, to come to Columbus. Yeah. And, and, we'll there, and there might even be some, some renewed interest in, or rather from not in I don't, Ohio state's interest has never went anywhere, but uh, from uh, Zion Grady, um, not someone who I've had in the mock, I think maybe ever, definitely not recently. Um, Zion Grady would be a huge, huge addition for Ohio State. Um, He's a a amazing edge rusher out of the state of Alabama. That would be it's 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 a rare thing, although Naheem offered is already in the class from Alabama. But Ohio State doesn't pull kids from Alabama too often. So we'll we'll see how that we'll see how that plays out. We'll see how that plays out. yeah, um, I, I think this is I've had this is like a four person edge class for a while. I still think this is a four edge class. So see here. Mathis is already in London. Merritt's already in. I Justin Hill's not in yet. Justin Hill from Cincinnati is not in yet. But I think all signs there are still positive. It, you know. 
you add Zion Grady to that, and that's a that's a huge defensive end class, which is needed after uh, Ohio State only pulled one defensive end, uh, one edge player last week, or excuse me, last yeah. class. Yeah. I'm dying, uh, Esquire in the chat, I'm dying to know how they tried to introduce the women's volleyball team into Sanders' uh, official visit without being super blatant about what they're doing. Who Who's not being blatant? You... You 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 think a recruiter's never introduced a recruit to girls before? Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> when they when they hand a recruit off to the players and say, "Show them a good time," there's a there's a wink and a nod happening there. Don't. I'm not I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm not saying it's okay or not okay. I'm just saying it's been happening for decades. All right, and with that, we'll get into the questions here, Jared. <laughs> All right, so we, we asked our our good friends over in our Discord here, uh, discord.thesloopcast.com, always be plugging, um, asking some uh, questions for us to answer in uh, today's episode here. So let's let's go ahead and start us off with uh, Austin here. So um, Austin starts off with a question. It's Jared's... Um, Jared's picture for for our for our episode here. Uh, what would you be happy with Fry if he managed to land Lau or Low, excuse me, and uh, Sanders, but missed on all of his interior lineman targets? So I guess I think that probably depends upon a lot what you mean by interior offensive line targets. Um, you know. As as we just mentioned, just add Jake Cook. Jake Cook is, you know, not lighting the world on fire if you're just looking at his recruiting numbers. So I assume Austin would not include Jake Cook in that, you know, because Ohio State has courted some very big time, high profile, national interior offensive linemen. Um most of those names are not names that I, I, I think are likely at this point. Um, Fanuku, I believe, committed to uh, Missouri. Strayhorn looks like he might be going to Michigan, maybe, but is uncommitted as of yet. Um, Avery Gock has committed to Michigan. Um Michael DeBoss doesn't look like he's coming to Ohio State. Um, there's been a lot of high profile national uh, Mason Short, uh, Josh Petty, interior guys who Ohio State has hosted, but doesn't look like they're coming. Um, so I guess if we're talking about the offensive line class of, and this is what is, I would say, I'm currently mocking. Low Sanders, McFadden, and Cook. Yes, I'm happy with that. I understand that those two interior offensive linemen are not, again, not huge, you know, immediate plug and play guys if we're just going purely off of recruiting rankings. And I don't think you should always go completely off of recruiting rankings, but I'm just trying to stay objective here. If we're just looking at recruiting rankings, neither of those two guys are, are wowing. Um, I have said all along that all you really need out of this class is two good tackles. Because Ohio State's going to need some tackles here very soon. You get two good tackles and then the 2026 and we did a whole 2026 mock a few weeks ago. You can go watch that entire episode if you want to. The 2026 offensive line class, not just in Ohio, although very much in Ohio, but not just in Ohio, but also in some nearby states, some connecting neighboring states is is rich in offensive line talent. Ohio State could easily pull six tremendous offensive linemen 
in the 2026 class without a ton of, of effort. Uh, and what my mock was when I, when we did the 2026 mock class a few weeks ago, again, you can go listen to that entire episode. I still stand by that mock for the offensive lineman, specifically for the offensive lineman. I still totally stand by that, that mock that we did. Uh, and it's a great class. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally happy just getting honestly, and no offense to Jake Cook or McFadden. I'd be happy with just two offensive tackles in this class and that's it. Like I'll just take, I'll just take two offensive tackles for this class and then walk away. Um, I think who they have on the roster plus the 2024 class plus the 2026 class, just get a couple extra tackles in there, which they have done with low as we are getting optimistic that they're going to do with Sanders. Um, and I'm happy with that. All right. Um, next question here, also from Austin here, the expectations of the defense that the defense is getting this year, are they destined to underperform? Um, almost. It's like it's like when someone say says uh, the Beatles are overrated. Sure, I mean, literally everyone says the Beatles are the best band ever. And if your opinion is that they're actually the second, maybe you're more of a Rolling Stones guy. OK, well, now the Beatles are officially overrated because they're number two on your list. Right. And. and that's kind of how I think that's sort of in the same line of what Austin's talking about with this question. It's like, everyone's just kind of expecting Ohio state to have the best defense in the country this year. Well, what happens if they have the second best country or the second best defense in the country this year? Well, they underperformed. Sure. Yeah. I, I'll say this, the schedule is what it is for the regular season in which you have, I would say two big opponents on it. So it'll be relatively easy to put up a lot of good offensive, excuse me, defensive stats this year by just kind of crushing some um, inferior talent. Mm hmm. I mean, you essentially have an incredibly senior class of a bunch of guys who everyone expected to go pro last year, and then you added Caleb Downs to it. It's going to be a really yeah, good defense. Just, yeah, it just it sucks. It's only June. We still have we still have a few more months before we get to get to see how they how they do this year. Yeah. All right, Odin. Odin with a question here. What's a big matchup this year, any team that is going to be disappoint everyone. Oh, that's easy. Oh, I know. I know immediately what my answer to this one is. Michigan, right. Texas. What is it? Michigan, Texas. Texas is going to mop the floor. I, I'm just plugging old episodes at this point. Back in <laughs> February, I think. Kyle and I did an episode where our, our first time ever, we did a know your enemy off season edition and we did it for Michigan and we detailed out what Michigan's talent looks like after they sent a bunch of dudes to the NFL last year. And it's not great. Their offense is completely devoid of talent. They turned over their entire defensive coaching staff. And while I do think they have a good starting 11 on their defense, I don't think they have any depth past that, except maybe for like the safety room. The safety room is, is pretty deep. Um, their tight end room's pretty good, but outside of that, they're either, they either they're either incredibly thin or don't have talent. Whiskey Bama is going to be skull dragging too. Going to be a skull drag. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, sometimes you see a big program 
do a coaching switch and struggle for the first few games. You see it a lot. You see a lot of like new coaches drop a stupid game that they shouldn't drop in September. It happens a lot in college football. Uh, I mean, heck, Fickle did it with Wisconsin. They lost a stupid game in like his first month at Wisconsin, too. If I, I can't remember who, but it was it was bad. Was it like Oklahoma State? No. Um, Oregon State or it was someone they shouldn't have lost to. I forget. But. Did we get the Whiskey Bama? Uh, do we get Whiskey Bama in Lambeau? Oh, it was Wazoo. It was Washington State, not Oregon State. That's even worse. Um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of agree, Jared. I think, I think that's going to be a massacre as well, too. And you can throw in another Michigan game here. I think, I think Oregon and Michigan is going to be. I think Oregon, Oregon is going to have their way when they come up to Ann Arbor. Yeah, and I don't know what to think of like. I really don't know what to think of USC right now, quite frankly. Um, I think it'll USC, I think, might could could be a pretty big disappointment this year. We'll see. So you might want to add them to the list of like premier games that we're super ready to watch that maybe don't turn out that way. Yeah. All right. Out of out of left here but i won't be disappointed here, well, when texas does things that are actually illegal uh in the state of texas to michigan i will gleefully watch every explicit second of it i mean that's true we won't be disappointed but i think everyone who's tuning in to see a good game is are, are going to be uh incredibly disappointed but we'll love it uh let me pull this game here here we go all right, um, Odin, Odin here with a question. If you could bring three FCS teams into the Group of Five conference, what teams would they be? And he says his his picks would be Montana, Montana State, and North Dakota State. And he's putting them into the Mountain West. Mm -hmm. um, uh, NDSU, I think, is an incredibly correct and easy placement um put them into the mountain west for sure uh outside of that um i have not been keeping up with fcs much lately if i'm being honest um and then a, a lot of the a lot of the teams that were making a lot of noise through the fcs have come up recently uh james madison uh, comes to mind right away. Um, I don't know. Hey, Kyle, who, who, who is in the playoffs? For, oh God, you are on top of things. He's already on top of it. You guys, um, South Dakota state, Montana, North Dakota state, Idaho, South Dakota, Furman, Albany, Montana state, Villanova, Florida, A&M, Delaware, Austin P Southern Illinois, these are these are the FCS rankings from last year. I mean, yeah, I mean, it looks like the yeah, it looks like the Mountain West should should just raid the hell out of the FCS. That that yeah, just makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think definitely. Odin just nailed this. South Dakota State, Montana, North Dakota State, Idaho, South Dakota. There, There's five teams right there. And then their Montana State sitting in eighth place. Yeah, just there you go, Mountain West. Yep. Or, or, right. or, or, Kyle. Oregon State and Washington State raid the FCS. And there's, there's your, your new, new pack. pack. Well, I don't know if it's yep. a 12 at that point. I think that's an eight. I think we're back to the pack eight at that point. Pack eight. The pack eight. There, There's your new pack eight. It's. And it's a very tightly knit geographic conference, too. Just all going just from the Pacific Coast over to the Dakotas. Mm -hmm. Not going to spend a lot of time on travel. 
there, there, there you go. That's there. There's your, there's your play. Oregon and Oregon, or excuse me, Oregon State and Washington State. He said right, he said uh, three we teams, to... but we did six. That's we over deliver here. Well, those are six teams plus the two that's left over. There's your pack eight. Yeah, call it a win there. All right, um, all right. Before we answer the next question, we're going to go ahead and take a quick ad break here. Uh, if you want to skip out on these ads, um, become a um, patron over at um, patreon.thesuitcast.com and um, to skip these ads, and we will. Be right back after after a moment. And we're back. Um, in addition to the Patreon, I want to encourage everyone to check out the merch stores. You can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com where you can pick up this Cincinnati shirt that I am currently wearing. Uh, it looks like a comic book city. That's that's the idea. There's a bunch of comic book city uh, Ohio cities, uh, even some small cities in there, uh, that are just mocked up to look like a comic book. Uh, so go see if your small, small, smallish town is, is in that list. And Kyle is currently wearing our Buckeye Sloopcast shirt. That's meant to, it, it looks like the golden eye logo. Um, is that one still up Kyle or was it raided? Do we, I have no idea. I'd have to look. Did Ohio state legal <laughs> come after that one? Not it, it wasn't it wasn't Paramount or whoever owns James Bond. I don't know. Um, it was Ohio State that came after us. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, let's Kyle, let's let's not worry about that. Let's get back to the questions. If people want to find out if that shirt's still for sale, they can check out merch.thesloopguys.com and find out for themselves. All right. Next question here we have with the new college football playoff set up is being the five seed. Better than being a three seed. No. If if that's the case, if 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 what you're saying is a universal truth, then the bracketing's broken. Now, every once in a while you'll have something like Oh, Alabama was really bad in the first half of the year because they were getting used to a new coaching staff. But man, they're really good by the end of the year. And, you know, sometimes you get an unlucky draw having to face a team that's really hot. You know, they're really on fire right now, even though they're seated low because they struggled at the beginning of the season. Shit like that happens in bracketing all the time. It can't be avoided. That's life. But if it's a universal truth that the five seed is better than the three seed, then your bracketing system is broken. It's the nature of the beast and it's beautiful. Absolutely gangland. That's, that's just how that works. But again, if, if the, if fundamentally, if with no team sitting in the bracket, number five is better than number three, then just make number three, number five. Just that simple. All right. Kabuto, yeah. Kabuto asks, what would you name the Elite 11 style national position camp for kickers and punters only? I believe someone answered this already, and I think I think it was the the correct answer here, but I want to hear hear what you say, Jared. Um, I would call it <laughs> I would call it the special list. Specialist? special list that's not bad i just came the special list specialist the special list camp that's not bad doing that off the top of my head that's not bad esquire uh, austin, austin 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 says it's it's the kick six kick six has a negative connotation to though that's that's a kicker failing the kick six was a kicker. I mean, the coach failed. He should net the kicker should never have been put in that position. Granted, but that was a that was a failure in special teams. Well, I guess unless you're Auburn, in which case it was a success in special teams. But that's not where the kicker was playing. That's true. That used to be the opening by Nike, right? Specifically for specialists. I don't 
think so. Wasn't the opening just like an all encompassing camp that wasn't for a specific position? I forget. It was everybody, if I recall correctly. That is also my recollection. All right. Ready for the next question, Jared? Absolutely. All right. With all the hype JJ is getting, and how much Emeka is looked has looked at the as the top dog, I think people are forgetting about Carnell Tate. What's yep. the percentage odds Tate ends up leading this year's Buckeye team in receiving yards? Um, love Carnell Tate. I think I think he will have a great year this year, but. It's low. It would be a low percentage here, in my in my opinion. I think it's higher than you think it is. I, I would say I would say like I'd say like 18%. That's not bad. Also very specific. Were, were you stuck in between 15 and 20 and just cut the difference? Yeah. Okay. Yep. <sighs> Remember when Ohio State brought back Chris Olave and no one was expecting Chris Olave to come back. Yep. Do you remember who was opposite him? Jason. Well, you, you, you skipped. It was Garrett Wilson. Yes. And Wilson. Yeah. But that, so, okay. How you, you ruined my thing. <laughs> you had Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson coming back. Nobody was expecting you were going to get both of them. Uh, Garrett Wilson was coming back. Chris Olave, huge surprise. And it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Chris Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And then who ended up leading the team in all of the receiving categories that year? This is where you say JSN. <laughs> so I'm just saying you get. JJ and Abuka drawing a lot of the attention, which could leave a lot of room for Tate in the slot to clean things up. Very in a very JSN esque way. It's mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying it's not totally unlikely. Honestly, if Emeka Abuka and JJ take so much attention, he's going to get a lot of one on one matchups. Yeah. And a, a, a typically against a a safety who's not a good man to man coverer or the third corner or maybe even a linebacker from time to time. Yeah, he's going to he's going to get matchups. Someone is and it might be JJ early than Carnell late. Uh, I don't I don't think I don't I don't think. Jeremiah Smith's going to catch anyone off guard. I think I think the cat's out of the bag there. It is. It is. Isn't Tate a bigger dude? Wouldn't it be uh, outside or did they promise mech outside work? Uh, that, as far as I know, is not official in any way. That's my assumption of how the the wide receivers will be positioned, and it's not a shared assumption. Um, we, it could be Tate JJ, on the outside and Emeka Buka in the slot. Um, JJ and JJ and Tate are the same height at six three, but uh, but JJ's got twenty pounds more than him. Crazy. <laughs> All right, uh, next question here. If you could combine two all-time Ohio State quarterbacks to create the greatest quarterback of all time, which two are you choosing and for what reasons? Um, I'm going to combine... going to combine... CJ Stroud with um I'm gonna say Haskins. Like if we just just Ooh. give give a, give a little more arm talent to CJ Stroud, 
Not that C.A. Stroud's arm talent is lacking in any means, but if you sort of, I mean, you could probably do the same thing maybe with uh, Cardell Jones. If we, if we just, you know, imagine CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud, but just with a bigger arm. Yeah. You know, my, my first, my first gut instinct is the, is the original Wolverine killer, Troy Smith. That, that's, that's always my go-to thinking that, because sure. he set that bar, he set the bar for Ohio State quarterbacks to say, hey, 3-0 again, 3-0 as a starter against against Michigan there. Like he's he set that expectation there. But if I'm if I'm combining two quarterbacks, I, I agree. Haskins, that arm strength just unparalleled. Um, such such a cannon of an arm uh, Haskins had. But I'm gonna go with the leadership. I'm gonna go with a leadership and the ability to um read defenses better, especially on um option plays. I'm gonna go with uh JT Barrett. I'm gonna go with JT Barrett and Dwayne Haskins as my combined um quarterback. So you get the arm strength that Barrett lacked. And then you had you had the the leadership and the just just everything that came along with JT Barrett. I I like that. I don't know if either of them were And I'm not saying this is their failure, but more of a. I don't know. My 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 problem being, I I I personally want someone who's going to be a pro style quarterback. And that's fine. That's 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 your side. Yeah. Um. As much as I respect what JT Barrett does, I don't think he's my starting point. As okay. far as what no, I fine. making a modern college football offense. And that's fine. All right. Uh, Austin asks here with Denzel Burke. Uh, with Denzel Burke announcing he has a child, should we call him the father of the defense? <laughs> if not, who is the defensive daddy on this team? I mean, if the team has a daddy. If the defense specifically has a dad. And maybe this is cheating to say, but the answer feels obvious that it's Coach Knowles, right? Unless you want to be like he's the granddad or the granddad. <laughs> he does have, you know, he's 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 very white, by which I mean his his hair, not his skin. But he's he's very uh, grandpa esque in his appearance. Um, Burke also said they called Caleb Downs the co DC. That's a huge compliment. I mean, that's an enormous compliment in a team filled with seniors. If you're saying that about a sophomore, that's a huge compliment in a very old defense. It is a defense filled with seniors to call the true sophomore, the co DC is a huge compliment. And I will say this about Denzel Burke for better or worse. When he says something, believe it. Cause I don't know how much of a filter, at least, you know, he's, he's in his fourth year now. Maybe he's developed um, a bit of a filter, but typically if Denzel Burke says something, you can believe it. He's not, He's not one to blow smoke. Um, Burke also said Howard is going to be the starter. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, he, he's not one to hold back. He's not one to hold back, for better or worse. And mm -hmm. if you're tipping who the starting quarterback is going to be before the coach does, it's not necessarily a great move, Denzel. Yeah. If coach hasn't announced that. I love Denzel too. To kind of, I love Burke. To kind of go along with that last question here, Odin asks, which players, which player is next to have a kid? And we got like another 27 year old Aussie coming. Feels like a, I mean, he might already have a kid as far as I know. <laughs> um, uh, Nick McClarty. No, Nick McClarty. 
yeah, yeah. Jim sorry. McGuire's already yes. on the team. Um, yes. yes. So it's yes, a second, yes. a second Aussie, a second Aussie. Yeah. Any Mormons on the team? Uh, not, not that I am aware of. No. <laughs> Although I, I don't, I don't have a section. We're, we're, I don't have a section in my spreadsheet for faith. So uh, I, I, I could be move, mistaken. We're going to move on from that. <laughs> Uh, which recruit will be the next Buckeye commit? Well, we just well we just had two in the last week here. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to pull up the um, I'd have to pull up our sheet S- here San- and uh, see, see who else is on the list here. Sanders, I'm going to say Sanders. Um, I've been incredibly Ooh, really. I think he's one of two names that make a lot of sense. Um, had you asked me on Friday, um, I might have said, uh, had you asked me on Friday, I think there's a decent chance my answer would have been Jordan Davison. Um, but based on what I've heard about how visits and everything went this week, I'm starting to think David Sanders, um, Dorian Brew, also in town this weekend. He's a guy who I've had in the mock class since mock one. Um, I don't necessarily, while I still feel good, I still feel good that Brew's coming to Ohio State. Um, I'd, I've not heard anything to make me think that his commitment is imminent, however, but he was just on campus. So, if, you know, I think that's always a good place to start as far as like who's going to commit next. A lot of times it's a guy fresh off of a visit. Uh, Jake Cook, fresh off of a visit. Uh, Bode, Bode, uh, Bodpen, I got there eventually. Bodpen committed fresh off of a visit. So answering that question, you kind of say, OK, who's fresh off a visit? And I don't think I like I said, I don't I've not heard anything to make me think Dorian Brew's commitment to anyone is imminent. Um, David Sanders, however, I'm going to go David Sanders. Um, that, that that'll be the biggest. That'll be the biggest out of state recruit for Ohio State in a while, just based off of need, based off of Ohio State not recruiting well at the offensive line position nationally um, for a while now to get the guy who is, according to some services, the best offensive tackle in the entire country, who is from North Carolina, not Ohio, not even like Pennsylvania or Indiana. Um, Not that North Carolina, hi Kyle, is all that far away. But again, it's not traditional Big Ten recruiting country. Um, I, it's it'll be one of the biggest wins in Ohio State recruiting in a long time. And I, I know, you know, people will immediately be like Jeremiah Smith, but like we get wide receivers. Yeah, we get wide receivers. You know, you could look at just David. Uh, you could look at uh, you could just look at Sanchez, best cornerback in the class out of Texas. In in that same in the same recruiting class as Sanders and say, what about okay, but like we get corners. We have offensive we haven't is got something we've been lacking. We have not gotten a high profile offensive tackle, especially. Out of state. Out of state, yes. In a very long time. It's it's a it's it's more than a big win. It's a slump buster. Mm-hmm. Um, it's um, better next. it better be Sanders with all the I, eyes and T emojis on Twitter. Uh, BIA showed out for a big official visit weekend. Maybe Tui Molau was similar, but we get defensive ends. Like we got one of the best defensive ends in the country last year. He was one of two big time defensive ends in that class. Now, granted, Sawyer 
kid from central Ohio. So granted, but we, we get big time defensive ends. When was the last time that Ohio state had a big out of state offensive tackle? Gotta love OG Walt. That's your defensive backs coach right there. Gotta love it. <laughs> All right. Um, let me, let me get the next question in here. Uh, if you can change one cha- championship outcome in each of the 2000s and 2010s that doesn't involve Ohio State, which two games do you pick and what outcome changes? By the way. Um, Gangland says, I can't answer that, Jared. Maybe NPF. It was NPF. 100% it was Nicholas petit Fury. That was the last big out-of-state offensive tackle that Ohio State got a commitment from. It was 100% NPF. Um, but let's forget that one of the reasons why we went and got NPF last minute was because we missed on one of the best offensive tackles who was in Cincinnati and he went to Clemson. Like that was such a hail Mary to get NPF. Um, It's, it's been a while and Carmen was a bust. So it worked out. No, he was not. Carmen played a lot of good snaps for Clemson. Was he as good as his recruiting rankings? Did did he reach his full potential? No. But is he still with the Bengals? Like he was on a Ross. He made it to the NFL. Like, I'm sorry, you're not a bust in college if you make it to the NFL. That's not to say that he lived up to all of the he was on the practice squad. Last I remember. But he but he actually made the roster at one point, did he not? Like You're not a bust in college if you make it to a 53-man NFL roster. Again, that doesn't mean that you completely reached all of the potential that everyone had put on you. But if you make it to the NFL, if you make a 53-man roster in the NFL, you did not bust in college. He played a lot of good snaps for Clemson, and he would have been a completely valuable member of Ohio State. Um, speaking being a valued member, you can be a valued member of our Patreon. Uh, you can go to patreon.thesloopcast.com where you can avoid ad breaks just like this one. This, this ad break right here. Thanks, Esquire. We're back from the, (laughs) we're back from the ad. Back from the ad. Um, What's our, what's our next question, Kyle? If you can change one championship outcome in the 2000s and in the 2010s, that does not include Ohio State, which two games do you pick? And what outcomes change? I don't, a championship game. Do we get one from each decade? Not that we really have anything in mind in particular. Um, can't involve Ohio state. Auburn, Oregon's a good answer from, uh, from gangland in the chat. Um, get one for Oregon. Oregon's never had a national championship game. Take one from the sec. Um, Washington T10. Uh, he, he, uh, he did not include the 2020s in this list. He said, uh, one from the aughts and one from the teens. I don't. I don't know if I one championship outcome. Yeah, I don't. I don't really like if it's not involving. Really don't, no. Listen, there. There are two. There are two teams. I mean, Michigan, obviously, an exception to this, but like either Ohio State's playing in the chip or they're not. There, there are two teams that win the national championship, Ohio State, not Ohio State. If Ohio State doesn't win it, I don't I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm like, and, and, unless I'm it's like, Michigan, then fuck Michigan. So I'm, I'm looking at these here and I just. I just don't really. 
really don't care <laughs> to be honest. I'm like looking yeah. at the two thousand the two thousands here. Um, okay, maybe, maybe you can say um, in two thousand nine. Maybe you can give one to Oklahoma beating Florida two thousand nine. I I don't know. I don't really care. And then looking at the twenty tens here. Yeah, I just, I just don't care, honestly. Yeah, yeah I don't. Yeah, we'll, we'll just move on. I yeah, um, just again, either Ohio State wins it or someone else wins it. Right, Austin here has a has a list of questions here. So, make your prediction now. What rank via points on twenty four seven composite? Will this recruiting class get all time as a recruiting class amongst all schools? I, I haven't looked at what what they currently are at on twenty four seven sports. Yeah, I'm I'm officially on the on three so, system. So they now. are currently. Uh, I'll just take a quick screen grab of the top ten here. Which looking at the top, oh, that is twenty twenty five. No wonder, no wonder why I was like, wait, Rutgers is up there? No. But yeah, no. Yeah, 2025 class. Yeah, no, yes. that's, Here that's the right. Top, here is the top 10 here. Yes. Rutgers has 28 commits. That would right be now. why. Qua how, yeah. how does Rutgers make it into the top 10? <laughs> Quantity. That's how. Well, yeah. they, have, they have six four stars. That's for Rutgers, not bad. Yeah. That's not bad, yeah. So, Ohio State has so almost as many as Michigan. Hey, hey, that's big time for them. Uh, no, holding on to them is big time for them. Yeah, that's yes, that's often the key for a school like Rutgers. It's not getting a four star to sign; it's keeping them signed. Uh that's uh, again. Fortunately or unfortunately, how that works. Um, they're currently at 291.10 with 18 commits. Um, I'm not going to take the time. Hold on. This is this is important. Okay. Fong bomb. Um, on threes, Wilt Fong has logged an expert prediction for Ohio State to land top 100 edge Zion Grady. We talked about Zion Grady earlier in the show. And then that is Malik Autry retweeting that. Malik Autry is a, another big time defensive end from the state of Alabama. I'm not going to listen. I, I'm i just going to say that that's one recruit being happy for another recruit. That's I'm not going to read into that and start freaking out that Autry is coming to. Not saying he is not saying he isn't. I'm just saying I'm not going to read into that. That's a one recruit being happy for another recruit. That's that's what that is. Um, not intended more for the Grady news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had already seen that. We talked a bit about Grady at the top of the, at the top of the show. Um, yes. Huge for Ohio state. Yeah, if that the, works out. If I, if I, if I, if I see, does add uh, Sanders, I mean, that's, that's over 300. Okay. Then, then, then add like, Zion Grady in there and then right. add and that that brings up to 306. Oh, yeah, just are, are we doing this here? Dorian Brew. Yep. Um uh there's Dorian. All right. Trey McNutt. Trey McNutt. There he is. Yep. I really don't feel good about who a third linebacker is gonna be, so we'll just leave we'll leave it at two linebackers. Add Jarquez Carter. Uh, hold on, hold on. There he is. Um, Defensive lineman, Florida. Oh, oops, uh, wrong one. Sorry, 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 um, sorry. Yeah, I know. Out of Florida. Where's I'm trying to. J A first name for me. J A R Q U E Z. There he is. All right, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Darian Smith, defensive tackle from Maryland. 
Darian Smith got it. Uh, Javon McFadden, interior offensive lineman from Maryland. All right. Uh, Brody Lennon, tight end from Ohio. I spell last name real quick. L E N N O N. Those vowels can be all over the place. I don't blame you for that one. Um, trying to find him. What was the first name again? Brody. B R O D Y. I'm I'm giving you guys my mock right now. Is what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Philip Bell, wide receiver from California. Then let's go ahead and add Jordan Davison, running back from California. Jordan or Jordan? Don. Jordan. And let's just let's just send that one. I think they do add another linebacker, but let's just send that one. That that brings it at three twenty three. Three twenty three. I think is good for like a top five all time class. Um, I don't know what all the. I think like Ohio State's all time high was like 319 or something like that. I don't have any of these numbers in front of me, um, so I could be mistaken. But. Yeah, it's a it's a historic class if they can do it. And I'll also point this out, and I didn't ask Kyle to add this in there because I don't think he's, I don't think the website would even let him. In fact, I'm almost sure the website wouldn't let him do this. I feel good that Jakeem Stewart, a defensive tackle out of the state of Louisiana, ends up committing to Ohio State and that he ends up reclassifying to 2025. Um, he would be instantly one of the best defensive tackles in the country. But he has not officially reclassified yet. So, Kyle, you're not going to be able to add him to the class predictor. Um, and I feel good that that's going to happen. I don't feel great necessarily that that's going to happen. But there's a good chance, not a certainty by any means, but a good chance that that happens. So you add in a, and of course you probably have to maybe get rid of one of the defensive tackles who we added. Not that I'm telling you to do that, Kyle, but um, you add one of the, so you, you add one of the country's best defensive tackles into that class as well. That, that pushes it up even further. It could be a, it could be an, a uh, historic class, but mm -hmm. you have to keep the guys who are committed, committed. And you actually need to get Sanders to commit. You actually need to get McNutt to commit. You actually need to get Dorian Brew to commit. These guys aren't committed yet. Um, you need to keep that cornerback room together. We already lost guy out of the cornerback room not too long ago. I'm not super concerned about it, but as long as you can keep Offord and Sanchez in, and I do believe Sanchez is like capital I N in now. Sanchez is one of the leaders of the class Sanchez isn't going anywhere, but you got to keep offered in the class. Maybe yeah. it's because he's Alabama and that might be my entire worry here, but I am worried about offered staying in the class. Second best cornerback in the league from a state that Ohio state does not have historic success in concerns me. We'll see what happens. Well, what I'm seeing here, Ohio State's best class ever was in 2021. What was the score? 320, 321. I said 319. That was pretty close. Um. So, yeah, that's I, I think this could be statistically Ohio State's best class. I think that's very possible. And Kyle, I want to say the best ever was maybe the Georgia class from a couple years ago. No. Was it the Texas A&M class from a couple years ago that totally fell? That doesn't even count. Most of those kids left after a year. Yeah. I don't even count that one. Screw that class. That doesn't count. Left and or suspended. That also happened. Yes. Yeah. You can't just go and buy a class. 
You can certainly buy individuals for your class, but you can't just go out and wholesale buy an entire class. You have to get at least some of these kids who want to come play for you. And by the way, they have to want to come play for you. You can't just keep yeah. offering money to someone who's not interested until they become interested. That's never going to work. If they want to come to Ohio State and they want to get paid, that's a different story. But you can't just keep throwing money at kids until they eventually decide to come because they aren't going to stay. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the best the best was not not Texas A&M. I'm just going back here. No, it's 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 recently. No, it was, it was uh, 2023. The, the Alabama class, if you don't. If you oh okay, you have to take Saiyan out of that take, class take out immediately. The Texas or wait a minute, no, Saiyan was twenty four. I always get mixed up with these numbers. Mm -hmm. Either way, all right. Um, got a couple of questions here, real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can't say Florida State, Clemson, or Miami for the ACC, or Kansas State, Utah, or Oklahoma State for the Big Twelve. Who wins those two conferences and gets th the three and four seeds in the new college football playoff? That's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of teams taken out there. Um, dark horse Syracuse. That's a very dark horse. Excuse me. It's a very dark horse. <laughs> um, I feel like didn't North Carolina lost. I don't think North Carolina is coming back. Are they Kyle? They they lost a lot of their guys, didn't they? Who knows? Um, certainly could say North Carolina, I guess. I guess um, you could say North Carolina. They lose Drake May. Lose or lost? They lost him, right? Yeah, he went to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, um, I know. I'm being Louis, pedantic. Louis, Louisville was the second best ACC team last year. Yeah, Louisville could be the answer. Although so I'm, the not, the I'm not teams, super, I'm just not super year, up on, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've really just started focusing on the Big Ten and the SAC. I really have. The, the top team, the top teams from ACC last year, Florida State, Louisville, NC State, Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech, your top five there in the, in the conference. And then in the, uh, what do you say, the Big 12 here? Um, <laughs> um, I really don't know. <laughs> Can't take Oklahoma State, Kansas State, or Utah. I don't want to take Kansas State, quite frankly. Um, I don't know how much I want to take Oklahoma State either. Um, Arizona State Cyclones. would have been a... Or not Arizona State. Arizona would have been a good answer, except... Well, this, they, they still have Noah... What's his name, right? The quarterback? Or did he go to Washington? No, I th I'm pretty sure he, he left. He's pretty sure he's gone. The coach went to Washington. He entered the portal, but then I can't remember if he actually transferred or if he um, did he leave. Did he stay? Did I think he, he went into stayed, the portal, yeah. but then just left the portal? Right? He stayed at Arizona, didn't he? I can't remember I his so. name. No. Have you guys seen Kansas's schedule? No, I have not. What's his name? Noah. Yeah. What's his Noah last Cifita? name? Oh yeah. That dude's special. I know they lost their coaching staff. I think they lost some of their players that, again, I don't know Arizona well right. enough. Yeah, he's, he's, still, he's still at Arizona. Yep, he's still at Arizona. But the coach went to Washington. Yes. Um. So we'll see. Did the coach make the quarterback or did the quarterback make the coach? We'll find out. But I'll go Arizona. Screw it. Mm -hmm. I'll answer, I'll just, I'm just going to answer the question. I'm going to say Arizona. Sure. Sure. All right. Um, if Ohio State football team played soccer, who would be the striker and who would be the goalkeeper? Um, Jeez. <laughs> I, well, your goalkeepers, your goalkeeper is going to be that. That's going to be, be so uh, JJ, right? It's it's 
Jeremiah. It's got to be reactive. It's Jeremiah Smith there, right? Be. He's tall. He's fat. He's quick. Like he, he's mm-hmm. a wider. It has to, I would think it has to be like a big bodied wide receiver as a goalkeeper, right? These are guys who can st- have good body we're, we're control. Lengthy. They can stretch out. Lengthy guy. They're we're lengthy. lengthy guy. That's, I, I feel like a goalkeeper is a wide receiver. Yes. Especially yeah. like a tall, lanky wide receiver. Mm-hmm. As far as a striker, I mean, I haven't seen him play. I haven't seen him come on the field in the scarlet and gray yet, but I feel, I feel like Judkins could be a good striker. Okay. I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't know the Benjamin Victor would be unreal. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't, I don't know. He, he I don't, said, I don't, I don't know the body someone, type someone of a, a good striker. Well, I'm thinking Judkins is more of a, he's a, like a power striker, um, can fend off defenders who's trying to slow him down and he just able just to power his way through. That would be Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah, but I like, I don't know their body types, if I'm being honest with you. Like, what position? Good, good, good feet, good, good footwork, good footwork. But what, what's the body someone composition who, someone, of a someone, good striker? Someone who has a... Someone who has a great accelerate, great acceleration. Ronaldo is built like a running back. Okay. Yeah. So mm. are, are we talking so maybe, running maybe, back maybe, body types? Th- I don't know the answer to this question. I'm yeah, asking. That, that's that's kind of why I was thinking like Judkins at first. Maybe. Okay. Uh, let's see. How many first round selections will come how many first round selections will come from this current draft class? That can that can be any of the next four to five drafts. That's that's we're already over Jeez. on time. That's too big. I'm not, I'm I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm I'm opting out of this one. That's that's a this draft class is isn't it, even done yet. Uh, is it, is that's, it more likely Ohio State? Is it is it more likely Ohio State plays 13, 15 or 17 games this year? More likely 17. Uh, I mean, it would, for talking pure likelihood, it would be 15, 17, 13. Like, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just going to be hard to, we've not seen a playoff like this before. It's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be difficult to go into the playoff healthy, stay healthy. We've just not seen it yet. And of course, someone has to do it. Someone's going to win it. Yeah. But while I, I think we were having this discussion in the discord this week, I think Ohio state has like a 25% chance of winning the national title this year, which by the way is very, very good. That that's an incredible odd to, those are incredible odds to win the national title. Any given year, 25% is amazing. All right. Um, take your best bet. But it's still just 25 percent. It's still 75 percent away from 100 percent. Who will be the three starting Ohio State receivers in 2027? Seven. Can can we can we can we can we just change that to 2026, not seven? (laughs) Because that's. They're not they're not even on the field. they're, They're not even committed to Ohio State. I'll, I mean, I'll just say Chris Henry Jr. And then we'll, we'll call that a show. Um, Chris Henry it's, it's Jr. And more. Quincy, Quincy, Port, Quincy Porter. There you go. I'm just, I'll just, I'll um, just say that the wide receiver number one on that team will be Chris Henry Jr. And we'll, I, I, that'll be my answer. All right. Um, if Kyle was at last one, Bod if Kyle Pin was a power Miller, ranger. All right. If Kyle was a Power Ranger, what color Ranger suit would he wear? This is all you, buddy. I mean, is that obvious? No. (laughs) It'd be red, of course. Okay. Okay. It'd be red. You could have said white. Nah, nah. It's red. Okay. All right. 
that's it. That's today's show. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, no, I've, I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of. <laughs> I've been watching a lot. I always of love when you the... say no and then keep talking with something. <laughs> uh, the Euro is going on. Copa is going on. The Olympic trials is going on. I know. I know this is like the dead period is about to start here for college football. But this is like great, great time for sports right now. From like now, really now, Jared, until the end of um middle end of january this is this is a great time for for sports right now you got you got all you got all of the uh soccer going on and then you got the world cup and then you got um not the world cup you got the olympics not the world cup this year but um copa and euro and then you got the olympics and then college football starts up yeah this is i'm ex- I'm excited, even though uh, football is not happening right now. It's it's a, it's a good it's a good gateway to get you to football. Yes, it is. Yeah, there's a lot, lot of things a lot of things leading up to the start of uh, fall camp. Token standing as required. Um, Guardians putting on the small market basketball teams, keeping us alive through July. I'm very happy for baseball. everyone who cares about whatever. I think all of I think that. He, but I think you meant, I think you meant baseball, not basketball. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, obviously. Did I say basketball? <laughs> when I see b ball, yeah. my mind immediately goes to basketball. I agree. I'm sorry. I agree. B ball is basketball, not baseball. Obviously, the Guardians are a, a baseball team. I'm surprised that I didn't translate I that. Agree. I should have translated that, but no, my mind immediately just said b-ball equals basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uh, that's it. That's it. Way over in time. We'll uh, we'll stop it right there. All right. Um, Tonight's ending music uh, brought to you by uh, a band called. I don't know. I don't know who I'm playing yet. Any requests in the chat? I'm, I'm still just scrolling through here. Seeing what I got. Um, let's go with Slim Fit. It's Columbus based band. Uh, they are called Slim Fit. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Slim Fit 